Hello and welcome back to 5 Minute Materials, the show. Today we're going to be looking at the pre-skinned local position node. So, let's jump straight into it. And this is the node that we're going to be talking about. So, pre-skinned local position, let's chuck it into the base color. What does it do? It gives us an error. Uh, Pre-skin position only available in the vertex shader. Pass through custom interpolators if needed. Let's go vertex interpolator, which I do have a video on. Let's see what this is doing. Well, you can see that it is a local position node. So if we rotate things, uh, this will kind of move along with them. If we look at the, the axes with the, the little widget, you can see that the blue is on this face. Uh, the green is on this face, and the red is on this face. Now, you're probably thinking, Charlie, what the hell? We've already gone over this. It's like world position, or it's like, you know, object pivot point, or blah, 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 blah. The reason this is good is because, as the node says, it is pre-skinned data. So if we actually grab our character here, and we get them to use an animation, use animation asset, Let's go like run loop. You can see as we scrub through this animation, our character actually preserves. It's like this has been painted onto them before the animation has been applied. So you can see on his hand, he's got this little bit of cyan. And as we go through the animation, it is still in that position. Same with the feet, same with everything. If we were to instead use local position, not pre-skinned then you will see that as we move through this animation um it's kind of more visible here that it's getting kind of painted on after the animation is being applied you can probably start to begin to see why this could potentially possibly be a really handy tool so first thing we can do with this is we can use it to i don't know project a, a texture onto our character you know maybe from above or something so we could get mask component mask rg um texture sample yeet that on there and let's just yeet that into here again this needs to be in the vertex shader stage so we're going to run it. We're going to run the coordinates through the vertex interpolator, not the output of the texture. That's an Im important difference. Uh, we're also going to divide this by some number. Divide, divide. This will give us the, you know, the tiling size. So we have the, the Charlie thumbs up texture. You, you can't really see really what's going on, but it's being top projected. And as we move through, it stays in place. So again, kind of useless so far. However, you could set up a triplanar texture projection. Another really handy thing this can be used for is for positional masks. So you could say pre-skin local position masked in B. And we could just get a lerp. Maybe we can have an offset using divide. Uh, the shortcuts for them are just A and D and click. So we just chuck some scalar parameters in here, S and click. And we put this into the lerp. Let's say we had a character that was half submerged in water and then got out of the water, for example. Um, let's say our character is, I don't know, yellow by default or this kind of gold color and when they're wet they are you know a kind of darker less yellow color as always this needs to be vertex interpolated never forgetty and if we look at our character then we will realize that i need to saturate this value we need to clamp it and if we start fiddling around with this so let's say like a, a blend softness of 100. You can see here as we move this up the character, it will be applied before the animation happens. So, you know, the the hands the hand is wet or muddy or whatever the effect is, 
And as if the hand gets animated to go, you know, even above the head, it will still remain affected. Uh, whereas if we look at it in just local space, then you'll see as it is animated, the hand over here is, is you know, muddy. And then as the hand raises up, it's not muddy anymore. So again, another really handy use for this node. Last one we're going to talk about, uh, this is kind of a, a synergy with one of the previous videos, which is noise. So we can actually use noise or, you know, vector noise. Uh, let's just do a 1D noise for now. But we can actually pump in the pre-skinned local position as the position for the noise. And then uh, we actually want to do this into there as the coordinates, not as the output of the, the texture. So you can see now, again, we've gone over this example a million times, but the noise moves with the character during their animation. And it also moves, you know, when they're rotated and also when they move through the world because it is a local position. Obviously, you can replace any kind of, you know, world position effect with this node and it will follow the, the character or the actor around and it will also take into account the, the skinning. Uh, well, it'll, it'll be pre-skinned as the node says. So hopefully you find some use out of this one. I know I found heaps of uses and hopefully you find some use out of today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with literally hundreds of thousands of members with literally thousands upon thousands of very high quality tutorials, guides, videos, classes, you name it. For example, you might have an old DSLR camera laying about that you don't really use. You don't really know how to use it properly, but Justin Bridges has you covered with his fundamentals of DSLR photography, which covers everything that you need to know in order to operate a camera. It's all synergistic and it also applies to video games and video game design, lighting and framing and cinematography, all very important in video games. So if you are looking to broaden your skill set, make sure you click the link in the description to get your one free month trial of Skillshare. So thanks once again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And welcome back to 5-Minute Materials, the show where we... Mm, <laughs> Today we're going to be looking at the pre-skinned vertex normal node. So the node in question, pre-skinned normal. Let's just plug that straight into the base color. You're going to see we get a an error. So instead, let's go vertex interpolator. If you don't know what the vertex interpolator does, I have a video on it, search it. Now that sounded really snarky, didn't it? <laughs> Cut that. <laughs> Base color is now giving us the normals. If we look at the things, you can see here, even as we rotate the character around, the normals stay the same. And you can also see as we animate it, as though they were in a T pose when they had this kind of painted onto them. What can we use this for? Well, one thing that I use this for, doing things like masking directions of the character. Let's say we wanted the character to kind of get wet or get snowed on from above, but then when they move around, uh, it, you know, it kind of stays where it is. Um, the way we would do that is pre-skin local normal, vertex interpolator. We're going to mask this in... B, B movie, classic. And then we could just chuck that straight into the base color. And this is going to return anything that is facing upwards while the character is in its its reference pose. So for example, if this was in its default pose, you can see that anything that's facing straight up is painted white. Anything that is facing sideways or downwards is painted zero. And then when we do animate the character, you can see that this doesn't change. So, you know, the parts that are now wet aren't going to change when the character starts moving around. Now, if we were just using the vertex normal in world space, then you'll see that the mask kind of moves around as the character does. 
Uh, now, this obviously can be useful in some situations. Like, for example, if we wanted the the clothing of the character to, like, droop downwards if it was wet or something, we'd want to be doing that in world space. But for something that's supposed to look like it's painted onto the character and not kind of moving around as they do, then the pre-skinned vertex normal is the way to go. Another thing you can do with this is construct a triplanar texture map for your characters using the pre-skinned local normal in combination with the pre-skinned position. So you could just grab the world aligned texture material function that comes with the engine, just yeet these into here and there. Let's just get a, a texture. Fantastic. And we'll just put that into there. And now if we go to our character, then yeah, this is this is stuck to them. So it's a triplanar texture, uh, but pre-skinned and in local space. So as we move our character around, move them back and forth. And as they're animated, this will all be in the, uh, the correct spot as though it was painted onto them before any of that happened. So that's kind of a quick explanation of the pre-skinned local vertex blah 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 node. Just to recap, you can use it for directional masks on the character that actually move around with them when they're animated. And you can also use it for things like triplanar character texturing. So if you do find this educational and or entertaining, make sure you drop a, a comment in the in the below and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you do want to watch me do this kind of stuff live, uh, join us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash prismaticadev. If you do need help with anything Unreal Engine related or you want to ask any questions about any of these tutorials, jump in our Discord, which I've linked below. And a big shout out to all the patrons who help keep this channel alive big clap clap for the uh, clap for the patrons so i guess with that we say goodbye goodbye <laughs>